We're going to go ahead and get started for today. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming again to our uh, ACU Anthropology lecture, lecture Series, uh, Alumni Lecture Series. This is the fourth annual uh, Alumni Lecture Series. And just to remind you again that uh, the purpose of our lecture series is to design for former ECU anthropology students to share their expertise and experiences to current anthropology students who are preparing to graduate or who are anticipating to graduate in the next few years. We hope this lecture series uh, creates more of a constructive, practical dialogue between recent ECU anthropology graduates with current ECU anthropology majors. Uh, in the, uh, as you know, this is our second distinguished lecture for our alumni lecture series. And I want to welcome our distinguished speaker, uh, Christine Anderson. Anderson. Uh, she is a graduate of our uh, anthropology department. She received her BA in anthropology in 2007, as well as her master's degree in library science in two, uh, 2010. She is a, she's here at ECU, she's on the West Campus. She's, uh, her title is an Instructional Design Librarian. And I really love the title of her talk, which is Anthropologist in the Library, An Unexpected Adventure. With that uh, introduction, and uh, again, appreciate your attendance, let's have a round of applause for Christine Anderson. Anderson. Coming. I guess I'm in a non-traditional anthropologist role. Um, if at any point while I'm talking, please interrupt me if you have questions and things. But um, basically, I just wanted to start by giving you a little bit of background about how I ended up where I am today. Um, like some of you, I may not have come to college with the idea that I wanted to be an anthropologist when I grew up. I was an undecided major. I started taking some intro classes, my electives, and my social science requirements, and found that I liked it so much I just kept taking more classes until my advisor finally said, you're almost done. Do you just want to declare a major and be an anthropologist? I decided that that is actually what I wanted to do. Um, the biggest influences for me, while I did enjoy all the areas of anthropology, cultural seemed to be where I found the best fit. Um, learning about other cultures always fascinated me. Uh, I took the Global Understanding course twice, actually, because I was lucky enough to have it change numbers while I was at ECU, and so it counted twice. But it was for the same class, and communicating with those other cultures from all over the world really seemed to be where I found the most interest. I believe it was Morocco the second time I took the class that I knew. I knew where I wanted to go, I knew where I wanted to do, and everything was supposed to line up so perfectly. Of course, we all know that sometimes life gets in the way and things don't work out quite as you'd imagine. I was going through some personal things during my last semester, last year really, in the program. And as I hit that senior, <laughs> second semester of my senior year, I realized that this wasn't going to work out how I thought and how I hoped. I was going to have to come up with some kind of backup plan. Oddly enough, it was my grandmother's suggestion that I volunteer in the library at that point. I was at, oh, back here. Joiner Library, the main campus library, and I started just going to talk to them, seeing which departments needed help. You'll find libraries always need volunteers, so there were plenty of departments willing to give me little tasks to do. That work in so many different departments kind of helped me realize that this might not actually be so bad. So just on a whim, I enrolled in the Master of Library Science program here at ECU originally which is taught online, but I was allowed to work as a graduate student in the library while I started school here. Unfortunately, the program at ECU is not accredited, so I did have to continue my studies also online, but through North Carolina Central University. And while I did that, I was actually hired as a staff member in Joiner Library. So I kind of, in a very short amount of time, during like three months, worked my way up from volunteer to graduate assistant to staff member pretty happy with that. Clearly this is something I'm interested in if I'm willing to keep going. I worked in the reference department, which is now their research and instructional services department. So I did a lot of time sitting at that desk, answering students' questions as they struggled with different assignments, um, teaching some classes for that co-ed class in the English 11 and 1200s, 
Um, but mostly I worked with um, microforms. Is anyone familiar with microforms? Very old data technology, microfilm and microfiche have been used for hundreds of years. A lot of really old newspapers and things like that are still available on microfilm. But they're slowly getting digitized so we can access them all online. Before I go on, let me just back up and say that I was not a user of the library as a student. I was a firm believer in if I can't get it online from home, then I don't want to use it. I will change topics, I will change whatever it takes. I never stepped foot in the library except for, for my required classes until I went in to volunteer. So it originally, not something I thought was going to work for me at all. Once I got into working with the department, oh, and federal documents was also part of the And the government documents, which taught me a whole lot more about um, the life inside a library and the different systems they use to organize books. And I thought originally that that might be what interested me about it, the organization. Because even though I am not organized at home or in my own life, the way books and materials are organized, sort of kind of called to me, and I felt a kind of connection to that. So I did some work in the, hi, you going in? Did some work in the cataloging department. That would be those people that make sure you can find the books. Your textbook is available, you search for it. Okay. Pulls up the record, did some of that work for a while. Um, and then um, I got into the actual program at North Carolina Central, started taking some different classes. I knew I wanted to be in an academic institution at that point. Public libraries were never going to interest me. K through 12 libraries were never going to interest me. I do not like children, so that was just something I avoided from the beginning. Also, um, corporate libraries did very much interest me because part of what I enjoyed about anthropology was learning about the organizational structure um, within a corporation and how you'd have to analyze that culture to meet those, um, meet those various needs. So I was interested in that. But then I took the health science resources class. And that class, combined with actually it was Dr. Bailey's class in medical anthropology my senior year, that actually convinced me that I could survive in the health sciences area. Most of my family is involved in some kind of medical type work. I knew I could never survive in the hospital or in a clinic. I would do needles, don't do none of that. But this gives me an opportunity to be involved in the health sciences but not actually be hands on in the health sciences. So it has been a good fit. Um, Biggest difference I found between going from the main campus library where I spent three years in that position, once I finished my master's degree in library science, I started searching for jobs, which is a not fun, exhausting process. But eventually, things worked out, as you'll find they always do, one way or another, and I was hired at the Health Sciences Library as the College of Allied Health Sciences liaison. Now there are eight departments within that college, everything from occupational therapy, physician's assistants, all that kind of stuff. Um, and basically what I was hired to do was be the library contact for that person. Doesn't involve a whole lot of anthropology skills with the exception that each of those departments has a very unique culture within them. The way they operate together, what their expectations are. I have to learn all of those kinds of new things. So there are some instances where I still get to go back to my anthropology roots. Um, I was the liaison, still technically am the liaison for the Allied Health Sciences for a year and a half. I been, did that. And then last October, I was rehired by the Health Sciences Library to be their instructional design librarian. And now I'm also the liaison to the School of Dental Medicine, which just opened on the Health Sciences campus. None of this would have been what I saw for myself at any age of the process. People I still run into from high school think I'm joking when I tell them what it is that I do today. It just didn't seem possible that I could be interested in something like this. But helping people find research in almost any career you go into, 
some kind of research is going to be involved. And part of that is going to be going back and doing a literature search for everything that's already been published on whatever it is that you're doing research on. And that's the part that I get to help with. Yes, I still help some students with their assignment type of information, but it's the actual doctors getting ready to write, uh, write up an article about how they treated a patient. That literature search has to be done, and I get to help with that. And it actually feels great to be making a difference in actual patient care. Um, being a liaison and librarian in general just kind of means anything. Anything that students or faculty don't know who to ask, they end up asking me. And even if it's just getting them the information to contact the correct person, we do things like that. I also teach a lot of classes on how to use the various resources that ECU offers, and I'm trying to improve those information literacy skills that are so important and becoming more important at ECU but are even more important once you leave ECU because your entire life you're going to have to search for something. And it can be a very long, exhaustive, frustrating process. And so they have people like me to kind of be the mediator for that. I tell students this all the time. The general rule is that if you spent 20 minutes um, searching for anything and just not come up with anything solid, but that's about the maximum time you should give yourself before you just stop and contact a librarian for help. Everyone goes to school for different things. This was our specialty area. We can point you in the right direction or get you the materials directly. <coughs> it is a unique opportunity for me coming from all at ECU, but coming from the main campus library and moving to the health sciences library, the cultures of both the employees within the building and the users that they serve were very different. So the first year I was at the Health Sciences Library, I think all I did was draw comparisons and differences between the two groups of people I was used to helping and now these new users and what they needed. So there are still times I get to pull on my anthropology background. The other nice thing about working in the library is that there are research opportunities for me as far as the eye can see. I've written book chapters, I've presented at national and um, regional, that's the word, conferences, um, getting to do that kind of work, I think, is my absolute favorite. Fortunately, it's only like 20% of my job or something, but I do um, give as much time to it as I possibly can. I watched some of the other presentations, and some, actually everyone I kind of saw seems to be doing something with anthropology. That's, um, anthropology instructors, the community colleges, and things like that. You know, the people that went and did archaeology work for a while. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to do any of that, but I've been able to use the experience I gained in the program here at ECU, and actually am able to apply it to the work I do now. Um, so I wouldn't go back and change anything. I would have liked things to have worked out differently. I could have gone to Morocco or Australia, oh, that would be great. New Zealand, anywhere. I still get really excited about it, maybe one day, because I still love to travel. Um, but that's pretty much how I got into the program and got out of the program. Didn't have any questions about that kind of stuff? No, okay, awesome. Moving from the liaison position into the instructional design position was a whole different situation. A lot of people aren't familiar with what instructional design is. But it's what you do every day. You sitting in class and someone up here talking to you, that is a kind of instructional design. Nowadays, it's incorporating more and more types of instructional media beyond just your videos and pictures and things. We now have lots of Web 2.0 technologies that can be introduced into the course planning, it can be embedded into Blackboard for the instructors to give you resource, or access to immediately. There's just, it's just a growing field as more and more um, technology-related resources become not necessarily available, but like someone finally realizes, oh wait, hey, we can use this to help um, in the education process. So it is something I'm constantly learning new things about. Part of the condition of me being hired as the instructional design librarian was that I'm actually now back in school at ECU pursuing my second master's degree, which will be in instructional technology. 
It is also offered online, thank goodness, so I don't have to give up any paid work time to actually do it. But it does make it hard to want to do my homework when I get off of work <laughs> at the end of the day. This is my first semester back in, and I'm still having trouble balancing that out. Um, it was hard. It was hard to get back into the school routine and deadlines every night at midnight. Mm -hmm. Hoping this summer will be better and I'll get back in the groove. But with that degree, really, if you give me an opportunity to go to any library, and there are libraries around the world that are constantly hiring. We see the advertisements come through. I think Guam was the most recent one. They are at constant uh, typhoon alert. So I don't think I'll be going there. But just, just a possibility, I could actually get out there. Um, the part that's related to the library is that, well, ECU has stepped up its requirements for information literacy among the students. I'm not sure when that will start, but eventually you'll have to prove some level of information literacy before exiting the university. And with that has to come better instruction with the libraries. Typically, people get 50 minute class and one of their early English classes, just an introduction to the library. And then when it actually comes time to have a research assignment or a paper to write, they don't really get any follow up. Here's, here's where you should go for that. Here's the best place to look for information. And they make all these wonderful online guides and online tools, but if people don't know about them or they're not discoverable, how can you even learn at home on your own? So. My job is to kind of bridge that gap. We're going to be offering education and instructional sessions in all different types of formats. There are several different streaming formats. We do plenty of things in person. The world of education is definitely changing. Some of the programs I work with today are completely distance education. And I talk pretty regularly with people from New Jersey and out in one of the bases in Alaska. They're all over the country, and they all need help. Undergraduates tend to only need assignment-specific information, which is very valuable, because you have to look, start somewhere in learning how to do this. But it really, the biggest culture difference, I think, between the two libraries was that, even though it's not, Joyner is primarily an undergraduate library. They're are plenty of graduate users that use it. They have a graduate study room and all that stuff. But the day-to-day -day questions, the day-to-day -day work I was doing was very much undergraduate focus. At the Health Sciences Library is the exact opposite. It is mostly faculty, some graduate students, and there are a few undergraduate students just from the nursing programs and a couple of the um, communication sciences and disorders has some undergraduate classes to let, make, let people try and see if that's something they're interested in. Um, and they get the basic library overview, but we got to get them in when they actually need research help. It is not as simple as searching Google like we all want it to be. And I'm sure eventually it will be that easy. But in the meantime, someone like me has to fill in that gap. My favorite cultural difference between the two libraries was that the faculty actually used me at the Health Sciences Library, where I would never heard from faculty working on the main campus library. It was student-based. But faculty, I mean, are required by the university to produce research. And part of that research includes that literature review. And then they just come to us to do that. It can be more stressful because of that. We have had People call over from the operating room needing something, some kind of information and we have to rush to find that as quickly as possible. That doesn't happen often, thank goodness, because it's extremely stressful for me. But yeah, the person's just cut up on the table in front of them. They realize that something's not right, needs some diagnosis information, and they call us in the building next door. The division of health sciences in general does seem to be where I'm happiest now. And I honestly would never have guessed that until your medical anthropology class. That was the first thing that really gave me hope that I could still do anthropology and not pursue the cultural dreams that I had once held so vividly in my mind. Um, and I just, I, I think I'm really happy there. Not the most direct path to doing what I'm doing today, but in a roundabout way, 
it's worked out, and I'm pretty happy where I am now. You all have any questions about anything? Is there anything you've been thinking about pursuing when you're done? And First of all, let's have a round of applause, <laughs> please. I like when you're talking about volunteering, and you got your suggestion to volunteer, did you say, from your grandmother? Yes. Now, <laughs> would you have ever anticipated your grandmother giving you a worse? As, uh, that kind of leads you to, to, you never know when opportunity yeah. and uh, uh, advice from your grandmother or uh, relatives will give you that, that opportunity or yeah. that direction. Uh, and I'm sure you had a lot of uh, suggestions, but what, how did it feel when your grandmother was saying, oh, why don't you go volunteer at the, at the library? I think, and I'm being totally honest here, mm -hmm. I think it might have felt, made me feel a little more obligated to follow through with the suggestion mm -hmm. because it came from her, because certainly she was not the only person that had ideas. I'm sure my parents were shouting out things left and right. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to do that. But coming from her, I, I, I was like, no, I don't know, Grandma. And she just really think you would like it, really think you should try it. And so I followed through with it, and surprisingly enough, I guess it happens rarely, she was right. <laughs> we were actually just talking about that last weekend. Mm. So she couldn't believe her suggestion took me this far. <laughs> and, and you uh, described uh, where you really uh, define, kind of you develop your roadmap, what you like and what you don't like. And that's, I think that's very critical where you really uh, know what you don't like about you know different uh, career activity, but you're you're going towards more of what you really like, and that's starting to open up more opportunities with your additional um, yes. uh, 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 training and master's program in instructional design. How, did you would you have ever thought that connection would happen when you graduated? No, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. That's kind of what I was saying. Like. I, if you think you know exactly what you want to do, chances are it's not actually how it's going to end up turning out. But uh, going in with a completely blank slate, I think has opened more doors for me just because I've been so open-minded, sure, let's try it, see if it works or not. Um, this past year I've learned that I'm very interested in mobile resources, so I got to run with that for a full year and teach different sessions. There's a lot of tools available for doctors to use like at the patient's bedside to make sure they run the right tests and all, all these different things. So designing um, instruction materials for that and then going to them sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes in groups and actually showing them how to use those things has been an incredible interest. Um, thank you all very much for coming. <laughs> and of course with uh, every speaker I also want to acknowledge uh, your time here and also a special award uh, and it officially goes like this to acknowledge your professional achievements and to give appreciation for graduating from our East Carolina University Anthropology Department and also for uh, putting up with me in my medical anthropology oh. class <laughs> so uh, thanks again uh, let's have a round of applause for Christine the big button Thank <laughs> you.